So uh, what we are going to talk about today is uh, Scouter models. And now this is not a product. This is just research that we have done uh, undoing at Cisco around um, doing something around concept drift detection. And we're going to, the goal of this presentation is to share what we created, uh, we tried, and what our experiences are, what worked, what didn't work, and what is something that you can take home, take to your work and uh, try out yourself. Maybe it's applicable to you also. So uh, this is just me, um, just a repeat of what Michael told. In terms of agenda, we're gonna start with a review of model drift reduction. I hope everyone here is already kind of familiar with this, but we'll just go through uh, model drift reduction. Uh, what are the challenges in detecting co concept drift? And uh, we'll then look at the scouter model approach. Uh, what is the uh, hypothesis behind it? And what kind of learnings we had uh, building scouter models for various types of uh, use cases. So what is drift? Uh, the predictive accuracy of models go down over time. This is something that happens again and again for machine learning models. Uh, here we have three examples. Uh, the green line is the one that is not drifting. The accuracy is staying within the brand. The blue line is something that is drifting gradually. The accuracy goes down over time. And the red line is uh, another use case where the application suddenly drops in accuracy at a given point in time. And you would see all three types of behaviors in production typically. And uh, concept drift is what we call the drift usually is the that the relationship between the features and the target changes over time. A machine learning model is built on the premise that a relationship does exist between the features and target. And if that uh, relationship changes, the model is not going to perform as desired. Feature or data drift is looking at the data or the features and seeing if there is changes uh, in the distribution of data in terms of data that is coming in errors and stuff like that. And ML models in production do need constant monitoring for both type of drifts, especially for concept uh, model drift to ensure that the model is performing as desired. And um, drift resolution includes, you know, diagnosing the problem, fixing data, training, updating training data, retraining, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what are the challenges with detecting concept drift? Now, concept drift requires that you take the performance of the model over time, including how it performed in training and how it is performing in production, and comparing them to see that if the performance is staying up or changing. Uh, and typical uh, drift performance measures are accuracy, precision, recall, F1 scores, and things like that. Now, any of these metrics, if you want to compute, you need the predicted label in production as well as the true label in production. Uh, you need both these variables like you're getting in the training data set to compute a drift. And true labels are not typically available in production. And this is where the root of the problem is. Like I know what the prediction is in production, but I don't know what it, the value is supposed to be. And how do I find what those values are? Adding true labels is expensive, like you have to do something like a human annotation to say, this is what happened. Or it could be an error prone uh, mechanism like autom automated labeling. Uh, so what other options do exist? So this is where uh, we started thinking, like how can we measure concept drift in production without having uh, a true label? Now, drift is more an indicator, right? It doesn't have to be exactly accurate. All we are looking for is some kind of a, a symptom or, or a sign that, okay, something is going wrong here. Maybe I need to dive more into it. So is there a better or easier way for us to do that? And that's where we kind of came up with this scouter model concept. Uh, what is a scouter model? A scouter model is a complementary model to the main model. And it is trained on the same training data set as the main model. What it does is it helps to predict if the main model is drifting or not. Now, how do we do that? So let's go through the hypothesis of how this works first, and then we will also discuss some experiences around it. So how do you build a scouter model? How do you train a scouter model? So let's start there. Uh, let's start, take an example of an e-commerce uh, website trying to predict if uh, customers are going to ultimately buy the product or not, and they want to do it using a gender, uh, age group, income, these are demographic variables, and visit duration, which is like how long 
the the customer spent on the website. So you got four feature variables, and the target variable is a buy, uh, whether it is they're going to buy or not, yes or no. So this is the main uh, training data you're going to use, and you will build a main model using the classical machine learning approaches, techniques, training, testing, etc. Now to build the scouter models, you need the scouter training data. And how do we create the scouter training data? Is that we flip the target with one of the features. So in this case, you can see that age group becomes the target and buy becomes the feature. So for the scouter model, we flip the uh, main model's target with one of the features and we are trying to predict a feature based on the target and that is where the crux of the uh, solution is. And for this, again, we will go and build a scouter model by using uh, the classical approaches that we have. Now, how do we come up with, uh, then we need to establish a relationship between the scouter and the main training model. In order to do that, what we do is we create some test data sets with simulated drift. When I say simulated drift, we create test sets with different levels of drift, like a 5% drift, 10%, 15%, 20% drift. How do you introduce drift into a data set is you can put some random data in some of the columns. Like you can go and say, I update 10% of the rows with random data. So that in those 10% of the rows, the relationship is disturbed, which means that it reduces some amount of drift. So we kind of do some trial and error to kind of create that kind of a data set. So with this single data set, we use an, the main model and do predictions. Again, because it's a test data set, we also know the true labels. We test and measure the accuracy for different data sets. And for the same set of data, we also use the scouter and measure the scouter model's accuracy. So as the drift in the data sets increase, both main model and the scouter model's accuracy will deteriorate. And when we try to establish a relationship between the scouter model's accuracy and the main model's accuracy. So each of the data points is the, the, the dots you see on the graph are the data sets. And for each of the data sets, you can see that the, as, this, as the main model's accuracy decreases, the scouter's accuracy will also decrease. Now, this is a hypothetical uh, simulation that says this is what should happen. And the expectation is, if there is a relationship between the scouter variable and, uh, and the target variable for the main, that we should get some kind of a relationship. And with that, I can create a, a linear uh, a regression equation that says, okay, y equal to ax plus b. So that if I'm given the scouter model's accuracy, which is x, I can compute the main model's accuracy, which is y. So we have established this relationship. Uh, how do you then detect drift in production? So let's say in production, you have all the feature variables, gender, age, group, income, visit, duration available to me. I'm going to use the main model and I'm going to do the prediction with the prediction and I'm going to get a variable predicted by in, in production. Then I'm going to create the scouter's production data. How do we create the scouter's production data? Is that I'm going to use gender, income and duration from the main model's features and then the predicted by the target for the, the target that was predicted goes into the scouter models feature. So instead of using an actual buy, I'm using the predicted value of the buy. And the assumption is that if that prediction value of y buy is accurate, the scouter model should also give me a good accurate result. Now, in the case of scouter, we do know the true label in production because it's already there uh, as a part of the production data. So with this, I can use the scouter model, get the scouter's predicted age group. The scouter's true label age group is also available. With that, I can compute the scouter model's accuracy. Pretty, uh, and once I have the scouter model's accuracy, I have the equation to compute the main model's accuracy. So I can just uh, use the same formula to compute the main model's accuracy. Now, so far what I have said, as I said, is the hypothesis. This is what we thought, maybe this is something that will work. And this is what we based on exper experimentation and that's how we continue to do our experimentations on. So what did we find uh, from these experiments? So the first thing uh, we had was we did with structured data, the classical machine learning uh, problems. Uh, and this is the main, the biggest thing we saw there is multi-class main targets and scouter targets. When both the scouter target and the main target are multi-class variables, we get the best correlation. You get a nice equation, the equation is, uh, close enough, less amount of errors, 
and we actually get a nice linear regression equation and we are able to you know predict the uh, model's accuracy very well this is not the same case when one of them is binary binary it's not giving us that level of signals so is any kind of continuous variables um the second thing we found was that the correlation between the scouter's target and the main target also has an impact now typically we will go and pick uh, the feature variable that has the most correlation with the target as a scouter true uh, but then if that is not a multi class variable then you have to look at the other variables also so it's kind of becomes a tough problems there and then um, we tend to experiment with all the features to find the target you have four, four features let me try all the four as scouter variables and then see which scouter model gives me the best uh, equation when i say best equation there is a pattern and then there is less error in the pattern like it's almost a linear uh, regression without any errors which means that the points are close to each other now this is kind of our main findings so in order to how do we fit uh, the uh, binary variables as well as continuous variables we want to convert them into multi class just for the scouter not for the main model when we take the variables for scouter model training or inference we convert them as multi class how do we mul convert the multi classes if it is a continuous feature use binning to convert them to multi class that's one way i remember that we may be losing some signals here but for scouter we are just looking at an indication that it is drifting it doesn't have to be like exactly accurate at two point or three points here and there is okay uh, similarly binary variables try to convert them as multi class uh, targets right so if it is a binary feature it is very difficult to convert uh, but if the target is binary what we can do is <clears throat> typically the targets when you are predicting binary targets you have an associated probability with it lot of models like naive bias give you the probability so we use that probability to you know expand that target to say it's not just by yes or no you can say a strong yes weak yes a, a, a weak no strong no you can then open up that category to multi class when we do that we see a much better performance coming out of uh, accuracy coming out of those multi class targets binary features we see that it is not working so better to go and use multi class and if we don't have any multi class at all then possibly try combining uh, you know individual binary features to create multi class features so that's one way also we tried so this is the thing with structured data and of course uh, for the scouter models we want to try different algorithms for the scouter models you know when is algorithm is nay bias random forest deep learning models etc now we found that deep learning models gives us the best accuracy for scouters but deep learning models are also expensive and remember that scouter model is going to be just a monitoring model not your main model so you don't want that to be consuming a lot of resources and effort in terms of training so this kind of like it works but is it is that what i want to use given the cost implications uh, that's the question mark that came from that so most of our research uh, is on structured data this is where we spend most of our time on and then there was interest across and in what about computer vision uh, what if there is classification in computer vision which is a lot of the object detection problems in computer vision are classification problems you are trying to classify what your bounded box is so can we do that so research on this is still in progress but i will still go ahead and share what we have seen what we have tried and what we have seen so far again use multi class main classes uh, in object classification the problem with uh, object detection is that you typically have a lot of classes right you are trying to detect an object as a person and vehicle and you may have 20 30 classes in there try to create object groups and limit it to around 5 uh, that's what we thought works better how do we get the scouter target this is difficult because the features in, in an image is usually your image rgb so how do you get a scouter uh, variable target out of it is we went into uh, dimensionality reduction and do like principal component analysis and pick the first principal component like pc1 as your scouter so that's one thing we tried which kind of giving us reasonably good results so far and then you can convert because pc1 usually is a, is a continuous variable convert that into a, a multi class with binning so that you now have a binning uh, multi class uh, scouter target and a main target uh, and then that's one way to uh, kind of skin the cat in this case of uh, computer vision 
Uh, results so far has not been as stable as structured data, but it is still promising. So we need to evaluate more fine tuning on uh, specifically the uh, getting the scouter target out uh, in this case. Then comes, of course, NLP classification. Uh, again, what do we do on NLP? Um, research is still in progress, but approaches are pretty similar to what we did with computer vision. Again, uh, multi-class main targets, like you know, if it's a classification like sentiment, it really works well. The classification has more uh, you know, target variables, it doesn't work that well. Again, limit the number of classes to five here. And how do you get this counter target here is, uh, topics from topic modeling uh, seem to be a good uh, representation of the features. So you can get like five or six topics or you can create a feature list of topics, prospective topics and have like one or zero there and all that kind of stuff. Or you can have three or four topics if you know that it's a small closed domain kind of text, you can have like four or five topics and use that as your scouter. That's one option. You can take embeddings for the strings and do principal component analysis, but that again is an expensive proposition, but still we're trying to see if that is uh, working from an accuracy point of view. Again, results so far has not been uh, that stable for structured data. <coughs> so um, this is what our research so far and general considerations if you are building, if you are building a scouter models with this is, one is that the cost of the scouter models has to be low. As much as we can get excited about technology, remember that this is just a monitoring piece. It doesn't have to be that accurate. It just needs to give you an indication that the model is drifting because just because a model is drift, you see some model is drifting, you're not going to immediately go and uh, retrain your model. You're going to do your diagnosis as to whether it is really drifting or not. You're going to anyway deep dive. So usually uh, an alert or a flag is usually sufficient here. And I say that scouter models are only for monitoring. And, and if you have a large inference load, like you're making like 100,000 inferences a day, you don't have to run every inference through a scouter model. You can also do sampling of the production data to run it through a scouter model. That will keep the costs down. And of course, watch drift over time before acting. That's the general uh, drift uh, guideline. And, and build and test scouter models along with your main train, the main models for training. That kind of makes life easier. And, and kinds of use it in the same pipeline so that both gets built and deployed and tested at the same time. So that's pretty much I have. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions? Chicky. Um, have there been any limits you've seen to like the number of features that you can have in your training data before this approach breaks down? Sorry, couldn't get you. So like, it's like the number of features in your training data, so versus oh, like 10 okay. features versus 100 or 1,000? Uh, we have been looking at more uh, a good sample size. Usually what we do is we filter out to the features that have a good uh, uh, correlation with the target. So you're not only looking at five to 10 features because we're filtering out the rest of the features and focusing on only the main ones, at least for the scouter models. You said that multi-class is the target that you want to do. Uh, if you wanted to use a binary target, how many classes would you have to break the binary target into? Four to five. Four to five? Okay. So, so binary would usually, as I said, right, no, one or zero. You can say like strong by, weak by, neutral, uh, something like that. <laughs> 